Hi children, welcome back to another Sunday Mass. I hope you had a great week. Happy Teacher's Day to all teachers. Thank you for your love, dedication and sacrifices, seen or unseen, in teaching and guiding our children, helping each special child of God grow in knowledge and grace. Happy Teacher's Day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, thank you for making us special and unique in every way. Teach us how to love others like you do. Jesus, may we follow in your footsteps to love and serve everyone. Holy Spirit, give us the wisdom and courage to do what is right always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Do you know that God has made each and every one of us special? None of us look the same or have the same personality. We are all created with love by our Maker. It doesn't matter if we are tall or short, have curly hair or straight hair. Each of us are precious in His eyes. Like how we look like our mummies and daddies, we too are children of God and we are made in His image and likeness. Every life and person is cherished by God and loved by Him. Let us sing this song together as children of our wonderful God. Who am I at the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Oh, is free. Wow. Uh -huh. 
What on earth are you doing, Joy? I'm trying to grow taller. But what what's wrong with your height now? I'm always the shortest in my class every single year. And in every class photo, I'm at the bottom corner. And every year when the teacher asks us to arrange ourselves by height, and I'm always all the way in front, I get laughed at. Hmm, I know exactly how you feel. You do? Of course. People tend to look at me differently because I'm in this wheelchair. Even if they try to be nice to me, I'll still feel really awkward, you see. Our Catholic Church teaches us that every person is precious in the eyes of God. It does not matter if they are different from us, speak a different language or have a special need. Rich or poor, God loves us all the same. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. In the world, people may not always be kind to others who are different like how Joy's classmate laughed at her. So when we see others who are being treated unkindly or unfairly, we need to love them and support them. I never thought about that before, Ko. I'm just sad about how people treat you differently, like how they treat me differently because of my height. Well, it can be sad sometimes, but I always remember that everyone has imperfections, things that they can't change, but that does not make us who we are because we are so much more than these little things that make us different. But I don't know what you mean. We are all made in the image of God. That, that means we are all made with love. And that love is so powerful that it doesn't matter if we are a little different. The love of God unites all of us. You, me, and everyone else in the world. You are so right, God. It doesn't matter if I am the shortest in my class. It doesn't matter how I am different from my other friends. What's important is that I am made with God's love. Just like Joy, we all have things that we might feel embarrassed by, things that are not in our control. But as Jerry said, we should always remember these things don't matter to God because He loves each and every one of us just the way we are. So if you notice someone who is sad and embarrassed about something that makes them different, Let's reach out to them in love, friendship, and kindness. Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Teresa of Calcutta. Although she was born into a rich family, St. Teresa of Calcutta became a nun and left her home and family to serve the poorest of the poor in India. With what little she had, she sought to love the poor, to accompany those who had no home and family. She gave them food, clothes 
and a place to sleep. And more importantly, she gave them love. She saw Jesus in each person that she served. She teaches us we have been created in God's image. We have been created to love and to be loved. We simply need to give Christ a chance to make use of us, to be His word and His work, to share His food and His clothing. Through you, God is still loving the world. So, this week, let us think about how we can see God in other people, how we can allow Him to use us to love others, especially people that we feel are difficult to love. For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. Oh, and mummies and daddies, don't forget to access Little Faith Steps' Facebook page during the week. We'll be posting the worship songs there. Look out for them. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. We sing a great hymn of praise at the start of Mass after we have purified our hearts by telling God that we are sorry for our sins. Did you know that the church has been singing it for over 1600 years? The first line, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will, are the words of the angels to the shepherds of Bethlehem, telling them that baby Jesus had been born into the world. We sing the angels' words at Mass, because at the consecration, Jesus will come to be with us once again. Later, we sing that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. These are the words of his cousin, St. John the Baptist, who told his disciples to follow Jesus. So together with the angels and saints, we give glory to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and prepare ourselves for the celebration of Holy Mass. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about how every person is precious in the eyes of God. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, 5th September 2021. We offer up this Mass for those who haven't encountered Jesus, that their hearts and minds may be open to His merciful love. Join us in singing the processional hymn. Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
and boys and girls and parents, grandparents at home, as we come together as one family and we celebrate this Eucharist together, let us gather with joyful and grateful hearts. And even though things around us might be a little bit difficult, causing us anxiety, and sometimes we don't know how to deal with our anxiety and our fears, we continue to trust in our Lord and to continue to walk in His ways and to believe that His mercy, His tender mercy is always with us. And with this confidence, we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen.
A reading from a prophet Isaiah. Say to all faint hearts, Courage, do not be afraid. Look, your God is coming. Vengeance is coming. The retribution of God, He is coming to save you. Then, the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf and sealed. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For water touches in the desert, streams in the wasteland, the scorched earth becomes a lake, and the parched land springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul give praise to the Lord. My soul. James. My brothers, do not try to combine faith in Jesus Christ, our glorified Lord, with the making of distinctions between classes of people. Now suppose a man comes into your synagogue, beautifully dressed and with a gold ring on, and at the same time a poor man comes in, in chevy clothes, and you take notice of the well-dressed man and say, come this way to the best seats. And then you tell the poor man, Stand over there, or you can sit on the floor by my footrest. Can't you see that you have used two different standards and turned yourself into judges and corrupt judges at that? Listen, my dear brothers. It was those who are poor according to the world that God chose to be rich in faith and to be heirs to the kingdom which he promised to those who loved him. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord returning from the district of tyre 
Jesus went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, right through the Decapolis region. And they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. And they asked him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers into the man's ears, and touched his tongue with spittle. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed. And he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the ligament of his tongue were loosened, and he spoke clearly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one about it. But the more he insisted, the more widely they published it. Their admiration were unbounded. He has done all things well, they said. He makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, it's been raining these few days, and I think it's very nice to be in bed. But thank you for waking up uh, to be at Mass today. But where is Francis? Let me see whether he's awake or not. Francis? Francis? Okay, he's not really awake. He might be grumpy. Let's give him a bit more time. Francis, we are on. <coughs> okay, he's awake. Hello, everyone. Okay, good that you're back. We missed you the last time. Um, so, you're not looking all that great. Are you a little bit sad? Mm-hmm. Okay, he's not looking at me. He is sad and I think he might be angry with me. Are you upset with me? Mm-hmm. Little. Okay, something is wrong. So, tell me what's wrong. Well, we, we don't have our one-to-ones anymore. One-to-ones? What do you mean, one-to-ones? Well, we don't go out anymore. Um, like, isn't this like a one-to-one? It's not the same. Right, it's not the same. Why? Because it's one-to-one, right? Well, we are filming here, and so this is like work and ministry. Right. So you're talking about a one-to-one, like a more like brother-brother thing, is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so thank you for so confidently telling me this. I think sometimes we as family members also need like a one-to-one time, like between husband and wife, maybe between father and son, daughter-mother, father and daughter, kind of a thing, right? Yes, we need a one-to-one time. I know, but... Like, right now with isolation and everything, we're all around each other all the time, right? Mm Mm-hmm, but that doesn't mean we're intimate with each other. That is true. That we're just around the house, but we're not exactly communicating or interacting, right? Yeah. So, what's your point? Uh, We should go out more. Like, how? Like, go to McDonald's and then I order Big Mac and then you have a sundae and then I'm putting you on the table and I'm talking to you? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, people might think I'm a little bit like, you know, like that. Um, off if I'm talking to a puppet, in like in McDonald's in public. Well, that's what I mean. Okay, fine. So, I'm hearing that you want this one-to-one. So, where do you learn this from? Jesus. Jesus. Where? In today's Gospel. Didn't you read? Children, did you see that? See what? That he has one-to-one time with the deaf man. Are you deaf? Okay, okay. <clears throat> right. I might be deaf and blind. So, yes. Indeed. So he went round this Decapolis region, which is the region of, um, we can say, the pagans, the non-Jews, that Jesus as a Jew actually went out to the people that is not belonging to his same tribe and wanting to connect with the people there. And yet, there was this deaf man. Yeah, did you see what he did with him? Yeah. So it's very interesting. Listen very carefully. In the Gospel, why not you read? He said, okay. Okay. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd. There, there it is. Okay, okay, what? Three times. Three times what? He, look, took him aside. That means in private and away from the crowd. Three times, Jesus emphasized that he wants one-to-one time with us. That is true, that Jesus really wants this intimate encounter with us. And so it's not enough to say took him aside, then um, the evangelist Mark emphasized again in private, and then 
away from the crowd so that he is really having this one-to-one, -one, private, intimate time with the deaf man. Good on you. You are very, very observant. Yeah, I know. And then look at what happens next. He put his fingers into the man's ears and touched his tongue with spittle. Yeah, I know. Many of you might be like, ew, spittle. is like, but hello. This is divine spittle. Do you know why this spittle is so important and this touch is so important? Why? Because God wants to remind us that he's not far away. We keep thinking that God is up in the heavens. He is. And that he's far, far away, that we sometimes have to shout and do something dramatic to get his attention. But he's trying to remind us that he's actually very, very near. And that he became one of us in the person of Jesus Christ. As if that's not enough, Jesus actually comes to us, especially when we are hurting, healing, when we're not well. Look at Jesus here, taking the deaf man aside and then touching him, putting his hands into the place where the affliction is, the difficulty is, that God wants to personally touch the area where we are hurting the most, hmm? that's blocking us. And then, as if that's not enough, he touched his tongue with spittle. What is this thing with spittle? Yeah, tell us. Right. To the Jews, do you know that at the first creation story in Genesis, when God created Adam, he created Adam out of dust from the earth. And so how do you make clay? You need a little bit of water. And so we're going to get the water from? Hmm, the divine spittle. Yes, God is spirit, but it's an expression that the Jews use as if God was moulding us by using his hands and then forming that clay that is formed from the dust of the earth, but also from the spittle from his mouth. And which means that God is personally involved in the creation of humankind, you and me. And here, Jesus is this new Adam, and we now have the new creation. And this new creation is that this man will be made whole. That he was deaf, and now he hears. Exactly. And he couldn't speak, and now he speaks clearly. Exactly. This is a new creation. That our Lord Jesus comes to heal us and touch us where we're hurting, where we're blocked, and he brings us and to make us well again. And... Interestingly, that the crowd says that he has done all things well. So this word well is related to the word good. Yes, well is an adverb and good is an adjective. But it actually means very, very similar things. And remember in the creation story in Genesis, when God created, what did he say? It was good. Exactly. And here, the people can see that Jesus has done things well. Everything is good indeed. So, it is good because our God is good. And He desires this goodness for us, which is why we need to continue to come to God. I know many of us are struggling. And we know that um, a lot of young people, especially nowadays in our schools, are facing a lot of stress, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to look after one another. And that's why we have got to be the heart of God, the mouth of God, the hands of God, the love of God to be with others that wherever other people are hurting, where we see that they are poor, poor, yes, poor and not just in terms of money poor, but some people can be also poor in their sense of peace, maybe poor in the sense of their joy. Um, and so we need to fill up um, their wallets of joy and peace. And so we ourselves must be filled up first, right? Yes, like me. Always smiling. I know you're always smiling. So when we are filled with the joy and peace of the Lord, then we can give what the Lord has given us. Because what we don't have, we can't give, right? So we ourselves need to have that peace. But how do we find that peace? We need to allow ourselves to be loved by God. To have our one-to-one -one with Jesus. Yes. So we need to have that one-to-one -one with Jesus. Allow Him to do what the Gospel was written. To take us aside in private and away from the crowd. Yes, and Jesus told us to go into our private room and then pray to our Father in heaven there that we have this intimate time with the Lord to know that He loves us, that we are beloved and He loves us no matter what. So that with this confidence in God's mercy and love, we can in turn bring this love, this mercy, this joy, this peace to all.
And dear friends, responding to God's word that we've just heard, let us now profess what we believe in. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God always welcomes us and hears our prayers. Let us pray for the needs of our church and for our world. The response is, Lord, graciously hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Go, and all priests and religious, that they make no distinction between people and inspire us all to live in harmony with those who appear different from us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Church, our parishes and communities, that they may be places of welcome and compassion, where rich and poor alike, are recognized as beloved by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of nations, that they will always model the mercy and compassion of God in the ways they treat their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For refugees and displaced persons, particularly those fleeing Afghanistan, that God will guide them to safety protect them on their journeys, and help them find welcome in new communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For those affected by droughts, wildfires, flooding, and other natural disasters, and for those assisting them, that God will calm the wildfires, ease the flooding, and that relief, support, and aid be quickly made available. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who hand on the faith, particularly preachers, teachers, and parents, that they may share the faith clearly and convincingly and lead others into an experience of God's great love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. God of mercy and compassion, may our ears be open to receive your word and our mouths to proclaim our faith. Hear our prayers that we might be a sign of your blessings to all whom we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. as we come to the liturgy of the Eucharist, we have our bread and wine made from crushed wheat and crushed grapes. And so may we now offer our crushed lives to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit and to allow the words Epphata be opened to apply to us, allow the Holy Spirit to really come into our lives and allow the Lord to open our lives to his grace. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Anthony, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Dear friends, communion is when Jesus is truly present to us in flesh. And this is the best time for our one-to-one -one with our Lord. He desires to come to us and we are here with our hearts open to receive him. But if there are areas that are blocked and not open during this time of this one-to-one, -one, Allow the Lord to touch us where we are hurting most, to allow the Lord to release that blockage in our hearts and our souls, and allow that flow of grace to truly enter in and to give us the peace that the world cannot give, the peace that only our Lord can give. Let us rest in this love, this embrace of our Lord Jesus, and to be refreshed and to be recreated. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Corinthians it says, There's one body, but it has many parts, but all its many parts make up one body. We are all part of one church, regardless of our parish, ministry, or the groups we are in. We are one. For we were all baptized by one spirit, clergy and laity, all co-responsible for the mission of the church. Like unleavened bread, we are all molded together by the same Spirit to form one body. Like the many who came before us, each part called to a life of sacrifice. Each one of us is blessed with various gifts and talents to share freely, to reach out, love and support one another generously. Just like bread blessed and broken, our lives and the work of our hands are consecrated to be the living body of Christ, to be given and shared with all, to be a light to the world. We, His living body, are called to build strong evangelizing families to strengthen the fabric of the church. 
to raise a generation of young people passionately in love with Jesus, to continue to form the faith of generations and mold the future through Catholic education. We are to care for our elders and shepherds who have cared for us, to grow and sustain our places of worship and infrastructures, and to encounter Jesus, be in communion with one another, and be his witnesses to the world. We are the living body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. Together as one, we reflect him. Let us each strive to be vibrant, evangelizing and missionary Christians in our families, with our friends and in our communities. Let us respond as one body of Christ. Be givers of our time, talent and treasures. Let us pray, act and give to build the church today for tomorrow. Our church has gone through many milestones in her life, and there is much to be thankful for as we look back on the many sacrifices that were made to build the church that we have today. As our church strives to continue to rise above the current, may our hearts burn with love and zeal to grow and enliven the lives of the many people. Let us reignite and shine our faith by supporting our church her mission is still very much growing and now more than ever needs your support.